the cultural record of the last half of the 20th century is moving image material. And it is absolutely critical historically to have access to that material to understand culture at that time. Let me give you an example. Um, how can one understand gender dynamics in the 1950s without having access to Leave it to Beaver, the Donna Reed show, uh, the kind of um, um, uh, films that kids were shown in uh, high school uh, about how to be a good homemaker. Um, um, things like that are what shaped people's consciousness around gender in the 1950s. Most people don't realize that this is a problem. Most people don't realize that, that uh, the much larger problem of how uh, many of the moving image cultural artifacts that have been important um, historically are not being preserved. So let me, let me give you an example. Um, uh, home movies. No one until a few years ago was really conscious of the issue of home movies. Home movies are a great insight into famous people, into uh, um, Einstein, uh, in fact, uh, with the recent Einstein exhibit at the um, Museum of uh, Natural History here in New York, um, they did dig up a couple of home movies, but very little. But to see what he was like as a boy, to see what a famous writer was like uh, in their youth. So there's a real kind of need for people to understand the importance of saving these things. Some of my former students are part of a group of uh, five people who are, have set up a foundation for home movies. They're trying to get money. Uh, they're, uh, they've been developing guidelines for people on how to save them, guidelines for repositories on how to preserve them. But we're facing an even greater challenge in the future because most things that used to be shot on film are now shot on video. And we know that video has a shelf life of perhaps a maximum of 20 years. Um, uh, anyone who can remember beta and uh, having beta videotapes um, that they can't play anymore. The VHS tapes will not be playable in another 10 years. Um, even the DVDs that people buy uh, will probably not be uh, playable on the new standard for DVDs that will be coming out in a few years. So um, there's, there's a real challenge with um, format obsolescence that, that makes um, uh, saving anything uh, problematic. In the future, the, the 20 years that we're in right now will probably be known as the digital dark ages. It's a time period in transition between most cultural elements uh, being in text and then uh, them uh, changing over to digital. And we have not yet figured out, and it will take us some time to figure out, how to save this material. So it will be similar uh, to the situation with film. Films made before 1920, only about 10% of them exist. A small, only a small fraction of the early radio programs exist. A very tiny portion of the early television uh, programs exist. Uh, we have very little record of the first 10 or 20 years of any new cultural technology. But this will be particularly a problem with digital technology because it poses all kinds of new uh, problems that previous technologies did not pose technologically. There are lots of things that do not exist in text. Government guidelines for, you know, how do you uh, apply for welfare or what are the procedures, things like that. Uh, some, of, some things like that are only available on the web. And um, those will not be here 20 years from now, probably. Uh, the Library of Congress um, has gotten um, uh, uh, just under $100 million from Congress to set up a set of grant programs to deal with pieces of this. Uh, but this is a very long-term process, and we're, uh, I'm just afraid we're going to lose a major part of our cultural heritage.